Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yes, indeed, uh, focusing on, well, yeah, still on political matters. It's, uh, as you may have seen, we're joined now by Mr. Labara Maku, who is a former Minister of Information and Communication, who himself has also vied for the governorship seat in Nassau State. Good morning, sir. Good to see you again. Good morning, uh, viewers and everyone out there. Thank you very much for the So how has it been for you, Abbott I mean... Uh, well, um, we praise God. We have uh, been out of office since 2014. We've also been we returned back to the citizenry, trying to be good followers, good citizens, and doing our bits uh, to make the country work. So you will know that uh, after so many years on television, I decided to go a little quiet so I can also listen to others. And um, I'm surprised I've been called out here today. <laughs> I thought I could shoot. Yeah, duty calls. I have to <laughs> thank you for accepting to come out. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to because when colleagues like you call, it's difficult to say no. Mm. And we appreciate that. So, is it that, uh, or what's the experience for you? Because when you say you decided to stay back and listen, so when you are in that office, I mean, what usually happens? Or is it that, yeah, there's so many voices, you're insulated from reality to a large extent, and then when you come out, you just want to hear it out? Not quite. Uh, uh, first of all, I have my background in the media, in the print media. Uh, I was Commissioner for Information in Nasara State for four years before I became Minister of Information. So it's, it's a job I had been very familiar with. Uh, the position of Minister of Information is one of the most difficult positions in government because you are the image of government, you are the face of government, you are the voice of government. And so you need all the prayers in the world uh, to be able to carry that office uh, properly and not mislead the nation. Uh, you need to represent government well, but you're also not just the representative of the government. You are the spokesperson of the citizens of Nigeria. So you are speaking both for the people and for the government and for the country. Oh. So whenever you speak, you must know that, yes, though you're officially a spokesperson of government, you're also the spokesperson of the people of Nigeria. It is their government. It is the people that you are serving under the authority of the president. You convey his policies uh, to the best of your ability, truthfully, and at the same time also speak to the hearts of the people and represent your country by speaking for your country. You are the PR man for the government, for the yeah. people, and for the country. Mm. So it's That's not a, a very unique position for you. So, uh, I mean, which means, because when in government, yeah. we understand, I mean, regulatory bodies will be con cautious and worried about, of course, we are worried, but there has to be a country so that we all will be here to do a job. But journalists still think, ah, wait a minute, but we have a job to do. We have... You understand both sides. So what's your explanation as to how to stay in the middle to make sure you balance all of this out? First of all, uh, you have to be God-fearing and truthful. Truthful to your boss, truthful to the government, truthful to the people, and truthful to your country. Um, and you will notice that uh, I tried the much I can as Minister of Information to speak to the facts, and to speak in such a way that we're not shouting out at people or doing pure propaganda, but relating to people. And when people seem not to be hearing, we have to go on a nationwide government or to show people things and speak and answer questions from the people. One thing I always remember was that uh, being a media man, I understand the complications you know, in public communication. And I tried to carry the press along. You will notice that throughout the government of Jonathan, we didn't have any major incident with the media. In fact, as Minister of Information, I persuaded the president to sign the Freedom of Information Act into law. Uh, that was one thing we achieved. Although it's not really being used now. I don't see a lot of people going to government, going to ministries and departments, demanding for public information. Government is a public trust. It does not belong to anybody. It belongs to the nation. It belongs to the citizens. But you... You, the problem we have most often is uh, often self-censorship. Uh, people don't want to speak the truth. Government is about speaking the truth. Government is not about lying. The government represents the voice, the, the sovereign will, the sovereign power of the people of a nation. We can do a lot of things by speaking truthfully. And especially when government is performing, you have nothing to be afraid of. And so what I did was to be able um, to ensure that I represent my boss um, very well, speak truthfully concerning what government is doing, and also speak to the unity 
and progress of Nigeria. Mm. So wherever I was found and I had to do my duty, I always remember that, that I'm exercising delegated authority to convey to the people what government is doing and to convey back to government what the people are saying. Uh, so you have to stay in, in there mm -hmm. and make sure that you do not lose your balance and concentration. I know that you would have had many moments of introspection, um, of trying to distill uh, the lessons or the, you know, the essence of your time in government, uh, you know, look at it in, in the Nigerian context, etc. But I also know that you also were not, you, when you left government, you didn't just become an ordinary citizen. You are still in the political field. You are still on the political turf. And I do know that you joined uh, APGA. Um, and I think, were you national chairman? National secretary. National secretary of, the, of APGA at some point. Um, now you're back in the PDP. Uh, first, I, I'm a little curious. This is, I, I know that, you know, we're still going to talk about the politics in Nasarawa. Oh, why did you, you know, join APGA? Just a little curious. Well, this is the story. Um, I started with PDP in 1999. Uh, I served the government of uh, Nasarawa State as Commissioner of Information and Deputy Governor, you know, of the state uh, between 2004 and 2007. Now, I contested for governorship under PDP in 2007 as sitting Deputy Governor. Um, somehow, I was denied the ticket. Somebody an elder statesman who was not a member of the party, late Ali Udoma, who contested against us twice, against my former boss, Abla Demona, the national chairman of APC, twice, and lost and took up to the last court of appeal. Suddenly, he came into PDP and was given the ticket. That time, uh, the, the general notion was that I was too young. Uh, they needed somebody more mature to be governor. But that was not too young for my job. I was not too young for all the responsibilities are held, but I patiently stayed back. Uh, then in 2011, God made it possible for me to be the Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which I held, I mean, from 2010 up to 2014. Now, out the sitting governor in 2014, Doma was defeated, uh, I wouldn't say defeated, was uh, pushed out in 2011. I believe he won that election. Doma was defeated he left office as the sitting minister, and I became virtually the leader of the party in Nasarawa. And we held PDP together, did everything to make the party strive. But towards the primaries, there was a conspiracy uh, in the national leadership of, PD, of, of PDP then to deny me the ticket uh, when I vied for the governorship. So having been denied the ticket in 2014 under very curious circumstances, I mean 2007 under curious circumstances, and in 2014 again. And I decided to test my popularity under another party to see whether mm. it is the people that don't like me or the PDP. So I went into Abuja and contested for governorship in 2015. I defeated Almakura in nine out of 14 local governments. People are just waiting for the results to be announced when they did the same thing they have just done now. They just went in and cooked up figures and then announced a different result. Everybody in Nasarawa State, including those who stole the result, they now won the election. So Nasarawa is a very curious place. Um, somehow, uh, those there's a clique of people who don't want democracy to run in Nasarawa State. They are running it as a state that does not belong to everyone. And because of that internal conspiracy against the majority of the people and democracy, they keep rigging elections. They keep writing results. And in doing this, it's a whole collaboration and conspiracy of people that believe that Nasarawa State belongs to only a section of it and not everybody. And, this is and those of us who, who, who will appear not to belong to those who should rule the state are constantly rigged out in a conspiracy between the state and the security forces. That's what's been going on in Nasarawa State. And that's exactly what we have seen in the last election of March 18. Mm. When, so, election, when election held, people were expecting uh, PDP candidate, Dr. David Omgadu, to be announced. Then suddenly, elections are changed in three electoral wards to announce a different person. You, so, you, you are back in the PDP now, and you're supporting the candidate of the PDP. Yes, I'm back in PDP. And uh, when I went in this time... Uh, I decided to play a leadership role beyond just contesting election. 
to see what we can unite the party and create a larger platform, you know, for the election. And I did. And the party made me the director general of all campaigns, all PDP campaigns, presidential, governorship, and houses of assembly, national assembly, and houses of assembly. So I led this campaign uh, in Nasrawa State in this 2023 election. And I can tell you that today in Nasrawa State, you know, Nasrawa is an organic PDP state. Uh, virtually everything you can point to in Nasrawa State in terms of progress was done under PDP administrations. And the broad majority of the people are in PDP. There is no way, given the fact that when we went into the party, we brought all the other uh, factions into the party and we united everybody. And that was why the election was so explosive. You will notice that in this election, the PC didn't win one single senatorial seat. I have to tell you that people have moved on. And to what it matters, since 2011, when PDP lost power, Nasrawa State has been an endemic crisis of violence. Even as we conducted these elections, a lot of communities were under IDPs because of attacks in the villages, kidnapping, killings, that have become endemic in the state because of the divisive politics of the state. You know, when you run a society where you say some people can't rule because maybe they belong to certain tribes, certain sections, then you have violence, you have chaos, you have lack of unity, and that's exactly what's happening to Nasarawa State. We don't know why this is happening. We thought that this state was created for all of us to work together, united, and anybody whom the people choose should rule. Doesn't matter his religion, doesn't matter his tribe, doesn't matter his background. All of us should be working as a family, and leaders that are chosen by the people should be announced. But that is not the case in Nasarawa State. They will tell you openly, you cannot be. If you win, we'll take it. We'll steal it. Go to court. Have they we told know. you before? Have they told contested? me? Yeah, or several. They say, you do, you win. You will take it. You can't if you win, we'll take it. And so, these conspiracies continue. This one you saw, so ugly on the match, it did. was so ugly because it is, technology has brought what has been happening in Nasrallah State in the full view of the nation. In previous elections, you never will be able to know what was going on. But in this election, because of the introduction of technology, and the social media. People are just following the results, following the results. Then at the point of announcement, bam, something happens. So but shouldn't they be hopeful? Because if that is what happened, then the people will have evidence uh, such that they can proceed to the tribunal with it, and it should be clear as day. If they Why have should that. we be winning election tribunals rather than... No, 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 I'm saying considering what you explained. Yes, I know, I know. If that were the case. Yeah, but the issue is this. You know, those who do this believe they own the judiciary. They believe that if you go to court, they will use money and influence and hold on to what they have stolen. And they say this openly. In the case of Nasrawa, I can tell you, apart from maybe 2003, when I know we really, really won an election, election in Nasrawa are the sustained manipulation because of the intention that not everybody should rule Nasrawa State. So they make sure they bend the rules, they bend our neck, they bend security. Look at what happened on the 18th of March, for example. Election had been conducted all over Nasrawa State. Then two electoral wards in Latvia are asked not to conduct, to finish the election until they see the whole result in the rest of the state. If they are losing, they will know how much figures they would like to add so that they can wipe away the what, what does Anek say about that? Well, Anek has not said anything about it, but uh, Governor Sule has said something about it. Uh, shortly after uh, the rigged election he was announced, he was receiving some group of supporters from Akwanga local government. He said, look, uh, yes, we planned this. We know. Uh, we held on. We know that we have places that were strong. We deliberately delayed the result in those places. Those are our strongholds. How can the governor delay results that is not organized by his office? Um, so, Marco, the I, so I know I, you know that. Um, I mean, yes, nobody wants to be, nobody wants to feel hard done by by any process. I know you also understand that when politicians say they rigged the election, they know that the role of the media is to say, well, yes, it's an allegation until proven in the courts. The courts are the ones who can then indeed justify or say, yes, this was what transpired. So, but I know you understand all of those, but. Nasara, there's been protests yes. uh, by your members of your party concerning what transpired. But at the same time, they say they've gone to the tribunal 
uh, you protested to INEC, they protested, and then the police have issued a statement. So the thing is, if they police challenge... issued a statement saying what? No, that the press release banning all forms of protest in, in Nasarawa state. So there's a situation here. If the PDP has gone to the tribunal, what's the point of protesting? Because that's the police press release saying, look, uh, they're citing security concerns. So are they going to continue the protest, having gone to the tribunal? Or what exactly are they asking now? We're not the one doing the protest. It is citizens who voted and saw the election, be, their mandate being stolen, that are protesting. We're not the one doing it. First of all, just imagine, how can government ban public peaceful assembly of people? When a democracy, you say in all countries of the world, in some places, protests go on for even one month, two months, and then defeat are better out. When we were in government, APC and those elements decided to mount a protest over Chibo girls. They were always here. In, you were here, in, in Abuja here. Mm -hmm. Seeing them at the National Park, every day they were there. We didn't stop them. How does a democratic government ask security people to ban? We know it's coming from the state government, it's not it. But, but there are some, though. So some why, of why will you ban public, public protests? Public protests are a constitutional right of citizens. It's not. What the, if it turns violent? It didn't turn violent. But there are some cases no, no, where. No, excuse me. It didn't turn violent. Some persons have been. At any rate, the right they were of, attacked at some no, of the protests. The, the role of security service is to provide security to ensure that. If it goes bad, then you handle whichever element is misbehaving. It's not for them to come out and declare a ban on public protest. We are not living under dictatorship of the military. It is the right of citizens to freely assemble and express themselves. That is a constitutional right that no security forces or even okay. the government can withdraw. So again, that is to tell you that the ugliness of what is happening in Nassau is being for the first time brought to the public life. And so the state government and, and the, who drew the election are uncomfortable with what is happening in Nasrawa. Nasrawa is sitting in a chest pit of internal oppression of people. Okay, I know, that you is know why you are seeing those at that bus of protest because anything the people can do, they have done. They vote, they rig, they vote, they rig, they vote. They are now different people. But you we, go to court, uh, they block you. But we so, cannot accuse the state government of being the ones that rigged the election. Oh, we, definitely, I can tell you this on high up. They are the ones. You, you have state, documents to substantiate let me tell all you, of those. What, what, what are you talking about documents? The state government had a place called a command, a command center in the government house. That is the place where they designed and rigged the election. They wanted to hack into the, the election. It didn't work. Then they decided that they will hold the election in a way. They will hold the election in Latvia, where they claim to be their strongholds. If it looks like they are losing... Then, in collaboration with INEC, they will add figures to the result and so announce. You have all this on tape? Can, listen, and we can go to court. And let me look, go to INEC. If you go to the IRF, you will see yeah, that. But, but this can be. Let this me finish thing, first. You, you have it on tape. Let me learn. If you go to INEC, you will see that the elections have been uploaded in virtually 99% of all the pooling units. Let me take Gayam and, the, and the Chiroma words. By the way, INEC is located in one of the electoral wards, and then they could not conduct election for three days. Yeah. In the headquarters, where INEC headquarters is located, the election is finished in Toto. The election is finished in far away local governments, but it will never finish in okay. Kayam. I need to bring in my colleagues in Lagos. Because they, have they, need, for you. they need to manipulate Mr. Marco, you haven't told us what you said about them saying they wanted to do plan A or plan B. Do, do you have them on tape? Listen. We have access to information. I'm a journalist. I have access to That's why you know Listen, that's why I'm asking I'm if you have any tape. Have access to information. And I want to assure you that what I'm telling you are sources we got from those centers. And I can assure you that, after all, the election was rigged in favor of who? Is it in favor of the state government? They are the beneficiaries of the rigging, so you can't make them. Well, you can't say again, that you know it's up to tribunal to determine yeah. whether or not no it was problem. rigged. You, 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 so let me bring my colleagues in Lagos. Go ahead, guys. Yes, thank you, Chamberlain. Um, Professor Marku, if indeed, you know, the PDP, um, Nasara State is a, is a stronghold of the PDP, in this governorship elections, without discountenancing your allegations of rigging, by the way, uh, the margin of lead, uh, you know, by the APC is still rather wide. How do you explain that? That widening is fictitious figures added to APC APC figures at the last minute so that they can... Those figures are not explained by the accreditation by Beavers. 
those figures are not captured in the beavers. Those pictures, those figures that you saw being announced at the last minute came from three electoral wards. How can an election in three wards overtake the election in the whole state? So they just cooked those figures up and announced at the last minute to give the sitting governor victory because uh, none of us other than this group must rule Nasarawa State. So that's what happened. If you go to IRF, you will notice that in the accreditation for Chiroma and, uh, and Gayam Ward, there are different figures for the House of Assembly and the governorship. But it's the same beaver that was used. How can you suddenly uh, two elections announce the one for the House of Assembly has different figures of accreditation and the ones for the governorship? But it's the same accreditation, the same number of people that voted in the governorship election, although that voted in the House of Assembly election. But if you go to the IRF and you go to the back end and you see them, they are different from what was announced. This was simply brazen and criminal. Do your worst. That is what they were telling us. Who oh, are the figures will announce it? Do your worst. So that so-called white lead is not explained. Look at what happened. Go, what did the APC get in the in the in the presidential election? What was the votes of APC in the presidential election? For example, look at the gap between what they voted in the presidential election and what they got in the governorship. That is one. Number two, in this election, PDP defeated Sule in his local government, in Akwanga local government. We defeated him flatly. We defeated him in his world. We defeated him in Akwanga zone, which is his own zone. Then we defeated him in Doma local government, in Obi local government. These are huge population centers. Then we defeated him in Karu. Where are they cooking those figures from? Very clearly, you will notice that this was the most brazen act of criminality I've seen in any election. That people suddenly just go and use three, four units and add to their figures and just announce. Those figures are simply fiction. They don't agree with the total accreditation for election in Latvia local government, in Kayam, in Chiroma. So that is what they, are, they were doing. It, was, it had nothing to do with the real votes cast by the people. If you want to do that, go to IRF. You will see the gap between what they declared and what actually took place in the election proper. It's hard to discountenance your submission that Nasarawa is a curious state, Mr. Marku. But then again, uh, why was the PDP unable to prove its mettle uh, as, uh, with Nasarawa being its home base in the presidential election? Because the PDP was defe defeated in the presidential election uh, in Nasarawa state. But APC was even more defeated. APC had the national chairman in the election from Nasarawa state. They had a sitting incumbent government in Nasarawa state. They were flatly defeated. Because, you see, what happened in the presidential election, as you could see, was that there was this wave, you know, uh, of obedience of young people that we all took for granted. And we were thinking that Peter B was a joke. Where will he go? So both PDP and APC, we were thinking, no, this man, he doesn't have structures. <laughs> he will not be able to do much and so on. So, But the people somehow, young people, seize the initiative from all the politicians. And for the first time, what we saw in Nasrawa, in several other places, in, in Edo, <laughs> in Delta, where the vice president comes from, we saw that the young people were serious about what they were doing, and they took advantage of the social media, you know, to project a program that has shaken the nation. For me, we lost. We lost in the presidential election. We lost truly. APC, which is the incumbent government, lost more woefully than we did. Uh, who had the government, who have the party in the state, they all lost. So you can't use the presidential election to judge uh, what will happen. We, right. we, we didn't win, but on the other hand, given our place in Nasarawa, we are not controlling government, we are not controlling federal government, but we did much better than APC in Nasarawa State, given their figures and the advantages they had over us. Okay, Mr. Marco, we need to wind down, but when PDP alleges that uh, the APC, uh, what, rigged elections in where Gayam and Chiroma Ward of Lafia local government areas, but the APC themselves are also challenging the PDP in Doma, Karu, Nasarawa Egon, and Nasarawa Egon is where Bugado is from. So they are equally claiming that there were more practices. The job, of that, no, the job of that election is that all those elections had been uploaded and Nigerians were seeing it. You can go back there and verify. But this election, the job of it is that all right. the job of this election is that everything is hanging out there. Those ones, they are just making bold to explain what happened in Gayam and Chiroma? Well, they know they don't have any relief facts concerning that. But Gayam is a short term in the election of April, I mean, March 18, all over Nigeria. Gayam and Chiroma and Tunga, those are the words that they suddenly added figures. And I'm saying it. How can you have different accreditation for House of Assembly and governorship 
that had the same beaver, same accreditation. You can't have different figures. So they did it brazenly, believing they will, again, what can they do? Let them go to court, we will take it. Uh, you know, that's what they did. But truly speaking, this election was very comprehensive. It's a comprehensive defeat for PDP, I mean for, for APC. Comprehensive defeat. And if Sule is a man of honor, honestly, he will not allow himself to be sworn in. Okay, but I think your candidate had, at some point yesterday, indicated that he won the governor in his ward and, yes. and PU. No, yeah. it was local government, not his ward and PU. He won him in his local government. What yeah, is but, it? But in not, his not zone? Ward. Goody the ward results. Defeated and Motor Park in 002. The ABC won in those areas. But the local government, yes. To the oh, he lost in the local government. Yeah. Okay, he, has not, he hasn't denied that. No, the result, you say, as, as you said, the results are there for everybody <laughs> to see. Well, Mr. Marco, it's good to see you, and, and we do thank you for coming on this morning, and uh, we do wish you all the best. It's always my pleasure, and uh, thank you, Chinese. You have remained where you should be, level-headed, and do your best for the democratic project. My, my appeal to all Nigerian politicians, let us all agree that this rubbish, this image battery of Nigeria on election has gone on for too long. Let us all agree that as politicians, if we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. Let our country win. I'm ashamed as a citizen of Nigeria when every election, no matter what we do, some people believe they must win at all costs. And that is the problem we're facing in the country. That attitude must change. Those of us who believe in this country and have come from the media background, we believe in free and fair election. We work with media and other citizens. Let's bring every politician to account. Right. What happened in Nasrallah is just a symbol of what is going on for a very long time. We pray that we'll get out of this. All right, Mr. Michael, thank you very much indeed for coming on. We wish you all the best again. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us.